We're here at the home of Hal and Nancy Glicklin, here in Hopkinton at Golden Pond Assisted Living. I understand they have many stories to tell over time, so let's go on inside and say hello. Hello, Hal and Nancy. Thank you for having me here in your home here in Hopkinton at Golden Pond Assisted Living. It's lovely here in your surroundings. It's relatively new for you being here. And I guess first on my mind is I know that you just celebrated a big anniversary, right? That's yep. true. 60 yes. years. My goodness, that is a long time. Congratulations to Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I know you had a big uh, shebang uh, celebration here in Hopkinton. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know, I wonder if you had a few words uh, to talk about that. Uh, what, what did that mean to you to <coughs> celebrate the 60th year? 60 yeah. years. Just long, long time. <laughs> it was a warm feeling just to be surrounded by old friends that we've known for over 50 years. And uh, we were very flattered that they came from far away, as far away as North Carolina, Florida. New Jersey, and, wow. uh, con and Connecticut, and mm -hmm. so on. And it, was, it was just a nice crowd and a lot of old friends, and we loved it. Mm, well, congratulations. Thank you. Do you think it's important to have uh, moments like that, a celebration to oh, honor? Definitely. Well, we didn't have a wedding. We eloped. So, ah, uh, <laughs> all right. <laughs> okay, so going back in time now, 60 years before, so you uh, decided as a couple to elope. Uh, how did that happen? Yeah, tell them how we met. Oh, well, how first meet? of all, we met at Roosevelt Hospital in New York City where I was uh, a... Uh, nurse in the emergency room wow. and Hal was an attendant on the ambulance oh, and so okay. he would go out in the ambulance and pick up the patients and bring them back for me to treat. Uh -huh. It was a midnight <laughs> job for me. I went yeah, to school during the day. He was going to college at wow. the time All right. uh -huh. and, uh, and that's how we met and he he was in the coffee room reading a textbook at when I walked by and I said oh what's the name of that book and he said kinesiology and I thought kinesiology what in the world is kinesiology but I soon learned <laughs> ah, so that is the start and you began to court or date right. so we would go out for breakfast at 8 o'clock in the morning at the end of the shift oh, and uh -huh. just, not too tired then no mm -hmm. just talk and talk and talk and talk wow. we talked a lot we still talk a lot <laughs> uh -huh. oh. do you think that's important for a couple. Yes, yeah, a lot yeah, of talking. I do yeah. indeed. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I yell too. I'm to <laughs> talk. Healthy yelling, would you say? Sure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. She wants to make sure I know who the boss is. <laughs> I see, I see. Well, everybody has to determine how that works, right? Exactly. <laughs> but it seems like uh, you have uh, many years of uh, well lived life uh, together. Um, over these Indeed, 60 do, years do. of shared life, and I imagine a lot of, um, oh, I don't know, human uh, celebration, shall I say. All kinds of experiences of yeah. one kind yeah. or another. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. So, so you met back in time, and you were in the emergency room, which is pretty exciting work in itself, and then you moved on. Uh, Nancy, you w went on to work as director of nursing. Yes, that was down the road a, a way. Our first job was at a rehab center in White Plains, New York, and we worked there for, uh, both of us worked there for about a year, and then we moved on from there to Bridgeport, Connecticut, where Hal worked with uh, cerebral palsy, palsy children, oh. and I worked in a doctor's office. Mm -hmm. And from there, we moved on to Hartford, where Hal worked at the uh, Hebrew Home for the Aged, and I worked at Mount Sinai Hospital. And from there, we moved to Windsor Locks and bought our first home. Mm -hmm. And he continued uh, working at Hartford Rehabilitation Hartford Rehab, Center, yeah. the Easter Seal Society. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We lived there for eight years, and our children were born there. Ah, okay. And then we moved down to Avalon, New Jersey, where he worked for the health department, and I stayed home and took care of the kids mm -hmm. and went to the beach. Ah, <laughs> ah, you lived by the beach then? We li Oh, yeah, we lived mm -hmm. on an island. It was beautiful. It had 
it had uh, 800 people in the winter and 10,000 people My in goodness, the summer. My goodness, wow. <laughs> wow, how about we that? We lived on Ocean Drive, uh, wow. right across from the inland waterway. It was very beautiful, mm. very beautiful. How many years were, did you We were only that? there a year because um, the job did not pan out the way he thought it would, but that was all right. We moved back to Norwalk. We wanted to move back to Connecticut anyway yeah. because it was closer to our parents. Mm. Her folks were in Rhode Island, mine were in New York. New Jersey was just too far away. Mm -hmm. And really. they were beginning to age, and yeah. Yeah. you were seeing them and helping yeah. we with had care. To get, we had to get come back a little closer to where they lived. Yeah. And I was lucky. I got a call from Norwalk Hospital, and uh, this job sounded interesting, and I took the job, and I worked at Norwalk Hospital for about 15 years. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, and we lived in Westport, Connecticut at that time. Mm -hmm. And our children went through school there, and we made many, many great friends in that area mm -hmm. that we're still friends with today. Mm -hmm. um, so what else? Good memories about that time. You have two children? Uh, we do. Mm -hmm. We have uh, uh, Donna, who lives here in Hopkinton mm -hmm. and runs Water Fresh Farms. Mm -hmm. And if you have the opportunity to go there, by all means, go. <laughs> oh, it's a wonderful place. <laughs> Yes. And uh, we have a son, Andrew, who lives in Trumbull, Connecticut, who is uh, quite ill uh, presently. And uh, we're, we take it day by day, you know, uh, I understand there's not much else we can do. Hospital now. He's in a Bridgeport Hospital in the ICU unit, and he has been diagnosed with a, uh, with a brain cancer that is being treated at this point but does not look too promising at this stage either. That's but we hope be for the best. We today. hope for the best. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I'm sorry to hear that. And um, I know you have dealt with a lot of transitions moving here. Your son, you're dealing with his illness now, and you're dealing with chemo right now. You're in the middle right. of for yeah. cancer. And I also fell and broke my broke arm, her. which is what right I didn't there. need to do, but mm -hmm. I did. <laughs> I heard you took your arm out of your... Sling. I took it out of the yeah. sling because uh -huh. I think, um, well, my husband is a physical therapist. He uh -huh. can help me get uh -huh. better fast. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, I think uh, in this short time of just talking, you seem like uh, such an uh, impressive, inspirational couple. Um, in all the many years you've been through, in uh, staying together as a couple, mm -hmm. living we've a been lot of life. a lot, but boy, we've had a lot of great times also yeah, yeah. over the years we've traveled a lot uh -huh. we've seen a lot what's your favorite travel place you can recall I think Italy <laughs> Italy for you how about you for your you Hal where uh, where have you been in the world that oh, you geez. loved the best which we, one did you love the best we, I, th I think I enjoyed the two two places that I enjoyed mostly was Israel and uh, Italy uh -huh. and right. uh, but we'd been to, uh, to England and Sweden and Germany and uh, Portugal, Spain, Spain uh, Hawaii, the Bahamas, Alaska, uh -huh. Hawaii. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of good, beautiful lot of places yeah. on the earth, right? And every place is different and mm -hmm. we've enjoyed them all. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. been interesting. Well, uh, that, uh, how fortunate for you to have had that time together. In addition to being so busy, it sounds, and doing this work and helping so many people yeah. in the New England area through your lives. We've been very lucky. Yeah, and then also with your own family and caring for them. Um, my goodness, and I know that you have a creative side that many folks might not know about. It's kind of closeted away in all little uh, knit niches around here and on shelves I discover I was wondering if you can talk a little bit about your creative life uh, you both have one um, so maybe we could have some little samples of that too uh, maybe uh, starting with you Nancy um, I know that you are a painter I am mm -hmm. And I, uh, I'm also a stained glass worker, and, and I got into stained glass when I was going to retire. But I had to work one day, and I said to my husband, who, who had already retired, 
would you please go down and sign me up for the stained glass class because uh. I'm going to I'm going to try that when I you know when I stay home. So please go today and sign me up. And uh, you know I've got to go off to work and but I'll be back. Mm -hmm. And so well, he did. When I got home, he said yes. He had signed me up and he had signed himself up too. <laughs> Uh -huh. So the both of us started in uh, doing stained glass, mm -hmm. and we did that for how many years, Harold? Oh, at least ten years or more. But I ended up uh, instead of working with glass, so many other people were working with stained glass, and I didn't think I was really very good at it. And I wanted to do something that was different, so I started to make garden stones, oh. uh, and uh, I ended up making a lot of garden stones and actually selling a lot of them at craft fairs. Mm -hmm. wow. uh, that was one of my more recent hobbies. Mm -hmm. Did that uh, involve etching or uh, putting um, well, it material? involved cutting glass yeah. into different patterns, birds and flowers and what have you, and embedding the glass um, into uh, cement. Mm -hmm. And I'd buy the cement and I had molds that I'd put the cement in. and. Uh, wow. When the cement hardened, it made a nice stone that you just put in your garden. Oh, I don't think I've seen anything like that, but I understand you're making stepping stones here? S at well, Golden I'm not Pond. doing it here. Oh, not here. Okay. Not here. Uh -huh. I'm not doing it because the facility here just doesn't allow for it. I see. It's, mm -hmm. uh, I was going to, but I gave all of my craft uh, stuff away. Right. I'm, not, I'm not doing that anymore. Well, um, I also know that you are busy sometimes making music and also writing and telling stories. There's a lot going on <laughs> <laughs> with you as a couple. My present hobby is doodling. Doodling, all right. And uh, I like to draw designs. With pen and uh, ink? There's one on the table back there that I'm doing because one of the girls here uh, requested a picture of an elephant. So I have a picture of an uh, elephant over uh -huh. there. Yeah. And. Uh, I have a book full of them, designs over there. This that, one, right? Yeah. And this is uh, your pen and ink drawings, which uh, is you'd like to be a color book, coloring book for adults, yeah. right? Which are just beautiful. Yeah. And so I, I thought it would be, an idea I had would be to have a coloring book yeah. of my designs, but that would be more for adults rather than for children. Mm. It's a great idea. So we'll see how it works out. Yes, and you also have a book. I know we were talking about that you had published uh, back in time. Yeah, that was a long time ago. Yes, and in looking at it, I think it's um, just a really important uh, book. I think um, everyone should have one of these to help them in their life share their stories, but also to help them look back on their life and integrate. Yeah. experience with who they are now. Yeah, once you start writing about yourself, it gets to be kind of fun. Yeah. But well, I'm doing that for my uh, f family. Uh -huh. And maybe my grandchildren or great-grandchildren might be interested in what I was like. Yeah. And uh, I, I wrote it, this book is for people who want to write about themselves but don't know where to begin. This is and true. that gives them a beginning, a place to start. Uh-huh. Here's one favorite stories. Humorous, sad, ethnic, drunks, children, sex, food, doctors, <laughs> lawyers, vignettes, animals, religious, sports, true fiction. How about that? All in one chapter. And that's just one of the chapters in here. I'm curious, did you both uh, fill in your own <coughs> book? I'm doing it, but You're working on I'm, I'm hoping my wife would get around to doing it uh, also. So it's a lot of writing, isn't it? A it's lot of a time. Lot, a great deal of writing, yeah. and he spends he has spent many, many, many hours writing his book. Uh, uh, well, I got I have a three loose leaf books uh, oh. filled with stuff. Wow! So you are uh, a natural writer, and I know you also write poetry, uh, <laughs> and you share it on occasion. Um, and are you still writing it now? I, it's been on hold oh, a little? Oh, I haven't written any lately. About the last thing I wrote was about, I like little rhymes. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I, I, Ogden Ash was one of my yeah. heroes. A funny and, poet. Mm -hmm. So the last one I think I wrote was like, uh, monkeys are quite cute to see as they swing from tree to tree. From them arose humanity. That's why so many look like me. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. 
Well, I wonder, I know you also play the You Can Sing. I was wondering if you could serenade us and, well, and Nancy. I usually, I usually play this while I'm alone because uh, I don't think I'm good enough to play for an audience. Well, maybe this will uh, be your and, debut. And since, since I okay. play it when I'm alone, I wrote a song for myself uh, when I play, play the ukulele. All right. Whenever I feel gaily, I like to ukul my lady and to sing out loud some old familiar song. I don't care if no one hears me, no clapping hands to cheer me, no need for them to tell me that I'm wrong. I sing for my enjoyment, I don't care about employment, I know that fame will never come my way. When I ukul my lady, it makes me feel quite gaily and adds a little pleasure to my day. Very good. Wow. I wrote yes. that for myself. I well, love the, way the I, words as well as the sound to that. You know, as a youngster, I never took any music lessons. I don't really know anything about music. Or I don't know how to read music. But while I was working as a therapist, one of my patients who had polio, I was trying to get his to be stronger and get him to walk and be independent. Uh, and uh, he was a pretty good businessman in New York prior to getting polio. But uh, I used to joke with him. And when I make him work, I said, come on now, you got to push hard and work those muscles or I'm going to hit you over the head with my ukulele. Uh -oh. Well, I didn't have a ukulele. I didn't have, I just liked the word ukulele. It was uh -huh, funny. Yeah. And uh, I, I used it once in a while just as a joke. But when he was discharged and he walked out of that rehab center, he gave me a present of a ukulele. Oh, wow. And wow. after he gave it to me, I started to diddle around with it. And, mm -hmm. and since then, I've been uh, just enjoying myself uh, uh, playing solo for myself for the most part mm -hmm. yeah. singing songs well that's i love that song i'd love to learn it and share it with other people because i think some people <laughs> i could give you a copy of i it. would love it because some people i think get stuck in uh what art is about and not being famous maybe or not getting enough money and then they lose the joy of art in it and uh, you kind of uh, show a little more of what art is about for more important yeah. uh, reasons to share to have fun uh, for oneself maybe for growing a little more i don't know well I'll, I'll get you a copy of it <laughs> all right and then i can start singing it <laughs> ukuleles have become very popular yes in they recent have years, right. you know in fact there was a it was just a a, a, a program about it in england where there were over 2,000 ukulele players. They wanted to make the Guinness Book of Records, and so they were. Now they were in the process of counting the number of players in this photograph. Wow! Yeah. How about that? May I see the ukulele for a moment? Yeah. This is a. It's not a very expensive one. It's, it's a no. You hold it like this. Yeah. And you so you taught yourself just by strumming yeah. the strings like this. I got some back. Oh, I've had that now for over 50 years, <laughs> and uh, uh, I back then I bought some cheap song books, instruction books on how to play a ukulele. Mm -hmm. So uh, I got some instructions from those little books, but otherwise uh, I have no real uh, uh, training in music. Well, so. I thought it was a beautiful song, and I hope more people get to hear it. <laughs> How about that? Uh, there's my playing for the day. That's a great idea. And it's a beautiful, I yes. think, it, what a wonderful gift uh, in showing how you affected other people on the path of your <laughs> life, too. Right. And well, a couple played, of times. He, he's played, he's tried to teach our granddaughters to play and sing, you know, and in fact, we have some cute pictures of them playing the ukulele. Yeah. And, uh -huh. and now we have uh, other family members, uh, you know, remember. Uh, Meredith's little girl wanted to play the ukulele too, so hopefully the it tradition will go on. That's right. Uh -huh. It's a nice tradition. This is easy. It's a lot easier than a guitar. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, well, uh, easy is good too. And uh, you keep uh, creative in so many different ways. I know there are paintings 
uh, by you and your stained glass and you have paintings in your home uh, by family members as well. I know your mm -hmm. granddaughters are both uh, painters artistic, as well. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so there's a lot of creative celebration uh, within your life yeah. together. And I know also um, that you tell stories and jokes, Hal, as well. <laughs> I don't know, do you yeah. t do this with Nancy? Or is this with other, do you tell uh, jokes and stories to Nancy? Well, spontaneously, it <laughs> uh -huh. de depends on where I am. And do you help to edit them maybe? Or no, I don't, out? because he writes them all by himself and they're so good they don't they're need so any yeah. editing uh -huh. at whatsoever. Ah, how about and, that? and what was the name of that group in Middletown we used to go to, the poetry group, you know, where... where Altrusa? Altrusa. Have you, have you ever heard of Altrusa? No. Well, that's a, a group of people who get together who write poetry. Okay. And once a year they have a, a meeting in the uh, Connecticut Middle, Middletown area that we go to, and they give prizes, you know, for, for the best poems written. And, uh, and so we've done that now for quite a few years. He hasn't won any prizes yet mm -hmm. because most of the poetry is very serious. Mm -hmm. And his poetry is never, ever serious. Mm -hmm. It's fun and funny. Mm -hmm. I only try to get a few laughs. <laughs> and uh, usually with the ukulele, a couple of times where I've had an opportunity to ent entertain a group of people, mm -hmm. I use the ukulele as a prop. And uh, I'd play a couple of bars and uh, tell a joke in between and play another couple of bars. Similar to the way Henny Youngman, if you remember him, well, uses... Well, I know, but I've heard of him. <laughs> well, he's a pretty famous comedian and he uses violin as a prop. Mm -hmm. yeah, so. Wow, I think that is great. And it seems like you are support for each other in the things that you've done through your life. Um, we only have a few minutes left. Um, I w noticed in your book, Hal, one of your topics was these days as I have grown older. And I wonder if you have any comment to fill in the blank if you were to write a couple lines right now. These days as I have grown older. Uh, well, I, I grow, there's an old saying that growing older yeah. is not for sissies. Not for sissies. Uh, and yeah. as you get older, parts of your body don't function as well as they used to when you were younger. You end up with all kinds of little glitches and zits and pains and aches and all that. And uh, we just have to keep on adjusting to all of these little difficulties we have. And uh, so growing older could be a lot of fun. One of the things we have as we age is a lot of good memories of the past. And uh, we like to relive a lot of these things. Uh, gives us some pleasure, uh, but, but you, that kind of helps to make up for some of the physical difficulties that we have. That makes, so, that makes a lot of sense. What do you have to add, Nancy? Mm -hmm. Well, I have to add that um, I'm very happy that we came here to Golden Pond when we did, and it was a major decision in our lives that we had to make because I was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. And I felt that it was time to be near family, even though we loved where we were living and had very good friends and had, uh, it was just a wonderful life. And so we came here to Golden Pond uh, Assisted Living and um, I got hooked up with Dana Farber. And they are so wonderful. I feel so fortunate that I am here and able to receive my treatment with the people over at Dana Farber. And the people here at Golden Pond, the whole staff, everybody mm -hmm. has been very nice and very helpful. We're Extremely very thankful. helpful. That's good to hear. Very, very nice. And, and, and also so, the folks at Waterfresh also. Yeah, and, <laughs> and you know, it's, it's great being my, near my daughter and my son-in-law and seeing my granddaughters every <laughs> once in a while, even though they lead busy, busy mm -hmm. lives. But even so, my, they, we do get to see them, and uh, and so I think we're in the right place at the right time yeah. for us. My daughter has been a great help to us. Well, um, yeah. that is, uh, those are wonderful responses to this question you have in your book, and I hope 
I hope many people get your book in some way eventually to answer their yeah. own mm -hmm. uh, Maybe it'll be republished and sold, put on the market again. I think it's a great idea. I think everyone should be uh, thinking about their lives as you have and integrating and celebrating mm -hmm. it even through the hard times. I'm very inspired uh, by meeting with you here today and I want to thank both of you very much for making time to share a little little tiny bit from your life well lived. Thank and you. Happy sure. anniversary. Thank happy you very thank anniversary. You. Thank, thank you. you very much. It's our pleasure. All right. Mine also. HCAM TV showing movies? That's right. Dive in Drive is a new show on HCAM. Join Mike and I as we present some B movies. Movies that have piqued the two Mike's interest. And not to mention, they're also free. We'll give you some interesting tidbits about the cast and crews. And point out some of the reasons these are classic B films. So check out the HCAM TV website at HCAM.TV for movie days and showtimes. Hi, I'm Cheryl Peralt, host of the program Meet Your Neighbor on HCAM TV. This show introduces you to Hopkinton residents, the many interesting people who are our neighbors, and we invite them to share stories, experiences, insights, and observations from their lives. We'd like to hear who you think should be interviewed on our program. So if you know someone that Hopkinton should get to know more about, please email me and stay tuned for more episodes of Meet Your Neighbor on HCAM TV. Yes, we're HCAM TV, but movies also? Dive In Drive In is a new program featuring the HCAM staff's favorite B-movies. Check our schedule at HCAM.TV for the next showing of some of the more forgotten films. Black and white or color, join Mike Terosian and myself as we introduce and give you some interesting facts about the cast and crews of classic movies. We hope you'll enjoy these treasured films of yesteryear. Hello, I'm Cheryl Peralt, co-producer of Wake Up and Smell the Poetry, an HCAM series honoring poetry, story, and song that takes place on the third Saturday each month before a live audience. Guest features share their art followed by an open mic with people who come from near and far. Others come to listen and be part of this warm and welcoming studio and to wake up a bit to arts and to life. You're welcome to join us and to tune in or visit our website for our weekly program. Hope you can join us.